Hello everyone, Andrew, welcome back. So in our lesson, what we're going to do is to create our kind of like uh, star scene and basically we'll try and recreate a uh, sun kind of like uh, effect. So let's go ahead and begin. So first thing I have in a uh, blank empty scene right here, I'm using the universal render pipeline template. So uh, just in case you want to follow along. So let's begin. So I'll uh, quickly create a game object like so. Create an MD1 empty object. Let's just call that our star. And once we've done that, let's go ahead and create our volume like so. And I'll just quickly uh, create a new one and add an override. Go to post processing and let's add bloom. And quickly, I'm going to set the threshold and intensity. For my threshold, I'll set it to one. For the intensity, I'll set it to 2.75, just like that. Also, let's go to our main camera and turn on post-processing on the rendering. And also, let's go to the skybox and set the solid color and kind of darken this so we can easily uh, see our effect. What we're also going to do is to go to our assets folder. So I have a folder here in the assets folder under our VFX assets. And I'll just right click and go to create. And let's create a visual effect graph. Let's call that solar, like so. And let's head back to our game object, which is our star. Let's add a visual effect component and search for visual effect. Click the drop down arrow. So let's drag in our component we created right now called solar into our asset template. And to open up solar, let's just double click on it. So this is going to be docked this way. So I'll just drag solar and put it right next to my inspector. And let's just close some of these views and also close our console. So we can have something uh, nice we can uh, visualize easily. So I'll just drag this over here. And the first thing I'll do is to get over to our spawn. We don't need a blackboard yet. So let's keep it aside. So for our spawn, let's set this to a value of say 100K like so. And for my capacity, I'll just set this to 10,000. Because my system isn't that uh, super powerful. So I'll just set the capacity to uh, 10,000. So for our initialized particle, so right here, I'll set velocity random. We'll just type in some values just to make this uh, kind of unique for our set velocity random. So for my Y, I'll just set it to uh, negative 0 0.33 and then for our y I'll just use 0 0.33 just so I'll make it uh, kind of like uniform with the rest of the axes and then uh, what we're going to do right now is to add a, a position spare so I'll just press the space bar and do a position and let's do a position spare like so so now we have our position spare We'll just leave our values right here and just click on our arc spare. And just here where we have our radius, if we click on spare, we want to create a value where we can set our custom values for our radius. So what I'll do is to go to blackboard, click on our plus sign and create a float. Where's our float? There you are. And quickly, we'll just call that our, uh, let's call it radius. And let's open it up and click exposed. And what we'll do is to set a range for our values. So we'll set it between, uh, let's set a minimum of 0.5, that's 0 0.5, and let's set a maximum of one for our range so that we can just, uh, plug in those values. And let's drag this outside and let's just pass this into our radius like so. All right, so now that we've done with the radius, let's go ahead and keep on working with our system. So what I'll jump to next is look at my uh, set lifetime random, and I'll just press in some, uh, type in some values. I'll just use 0.21 for my random A, and I'll use a 2.53 for my random size B. And let's just go ahead and drag this down, and also drag in our update, because it's kind of like hiding underneath our initialized particle. And I think we're done with our initialized uh, particle. So let's go ahead, our uh, initialize stage. 
So uh, let's just drag this and let's go ahead and move over to our quad particle output and set some uh, default values. So for our quad output, what we're going to do is to change our blend mode. Let's switch it over to additive and let's switch our default particle and use our uh, popular default like so. So let's use our search for default and use our default particle like that. And let's not to worry about our view. We'll actually go ahead and fix it. It must be reacting to the post-processing and the size of our particles are extremely large. That's why we're getting this uh, output. So I'm not, I don't think I'm going to use size over life. So I'll just go ahead and delete it. In case I need to use it any other time, I can always bring it back. And we can actually see how our output is appearing. So now we've set our uh, blend mode to additive and we've actually uh, created our default particles. Let's go ahead and orient along our velocity. So let's switch this to orient along velocity and this is going to have our particle kind of like shoot out and also let's get rid of the skybox i'm back in my scene view click this drop down and i'll get rid of the skybox and let's just zoom in on our particle so we can actually see it like so let's actually look at our particles and we can just kind of like have that aside so that when we're working and we're making changes we can easily see it so what I want to do is to use a set scale to set the scale of our particles. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I'll press spacebar and search for set scale. So let's do a set scale, which is the attribute. And now we're going to set our channels to just the X and Y axes. And for our set scale, let's create two properties so we can actually switch that each time we want. So let's open up our blackboard and create a float and create another float so i'll call the first one size and the second float i'll just call that size two like so and i'll just open up size click on exposed open up size two and also click on exposed for size one i'll set a value of 0.93 and then for size two I'll set a value of 1.72. So let's see 1.72 like so. And we'll just drag these outside like that. Now we can close our blackboard. So what we're going to do is just set this to our scale. So for our X scale, we'll pass in X. And then for our Y scale, We'll set the size Y like so. So we can actually see the size being affected and we can also see that orient along velocity working also. So uh, let's go ahead and also set our size but because we used set scale, let's set a size for our particles. So to do that, I'll just press the space bar and I'll just jump over to set size. So I'll just type uh, set size like so, which is an attribute set. And here I'll just use a 0 0.025 to make our particles really small. Now it affects memory if you make your particles super large, especially when you're spawning millions of particles. So you might want to keep it on a small size in case you have a system that's not uh, super uh, powerful. So uh, let's go ahead and set our color and then we'll split the video into two parts and continue working on our particle. So let's go ahead and click on the color node right now. Now when I click on the color, we actually see that I have some of these presets I've actually created initially. And these are some of the presets I'm going to be using like so. You can quickly check out the values. So the first one, I have set the value to a bright yellow, which is around here. And for the uh, mid side, mid section, I've actually set one around this value here. We can see the intensity also. And then finally for our end color, it's just a plain 100% white with 225, to We can actually see that real quick. So you can actually, if you want to work with this, or you want to, well, you want to work with yours, that's super fine. We could just pause the video, follow along, and set those values. Again, we're getting this excessive glow because of the uh, intensity we have on our bloom. We can always switch that down and uh, work with it as well. What I'm also going to do is to like kind of like set this view to align our game object with the view so that when we're in our game view, we can actually see our particles spawning this way. 
So, uh, and one final thing I like to do is to go to our blackboard and let's create a gradient. And if we jump to our gradient, we'll just call it our color. I'll press the return key and I'll just click the drop down arrow like so. And if we click on this, we can actually use our HDR preset, drag our color out and connect that in. Right, so we can actually see that in action. So what we're left to do is to just save our scene. And I'll go to my scenes, like so. And I'll just call this solar. And in our next lesson, we're going to walk, uh, continue working on our particle system, on our visual effect, rather. Thank you very much, guys, for watching, and I'll see you in the next lesson.